Bernardino became the richest man in the world, and what's crazy is, he only sells to 1% of the population. You may not have heard of Bernardino, but who doesn't know about his companies? Louis Vuitton, Christian Dior, Celine, Sephora, DKNY, Volgari, Givenchy, Tiffany, Hennessy, Marc Jacobs. While tech billionaires and everyone else's net worth has plummeted, Elon Musk lost $200 billion, Bezos lost $70 billion, but Bernardino only lost $7 billion. His business model is recession-proof. The man who's selling $10,000 purses. There are some lessons that we can learn from the richest man in the world. So the first thing we have to understand is the psychology of the rich versus the psychology of the poor. Now, a few years back, there was news in a magazine about a guy who bought a $50,000 burger. Now that's crazy. Who would spend 50 grand on a burger? Now think about a person earning $20 an hour and he gets a burger that costs him 27 bucks for his lunch of burger fries and a Coke. Turns out, the guy that bought that burger was a guy who made like $100 million that year. If he made $100 million and he worked 2,000 hours, he made $50,000 an hour, while an average person makes $20 an hour and his burgers cost him 27 bucks. Now the finance guy's $50,000 burger was cheaper for him, for his amount of money that he was making than the other person's $27 lunch. It's a huge shift if you think of it that way you'll realize that you're playing this game wrong and that you're not empathizing with the rich because he's gotta be thinking differently than the average person. To be able to afford a $50,000 burger, it also kind of makes sense for him. The second is how we create products that specifically serve rich people. They think differently and want different things. The best thing to do is study luxury brands. Now, when you shop at a high-end store, they'll offer you champagne while you shop. You're gonna have somebody who's assigned to you. The moment you walk in the door, they've delivered that better experience because of the premium and luxury prices they charge. If you've ever been to a luxury mall and you see a purse for $10,000 and you see a jacket for $50,000, now don't say, those people are ridiculous, or I can't believe someone would spend money on that. What you must actually do is empathize with the buyer. What kind of person would spend $50,000 on a jacket? If any rich person can pick from all the jackets and they have so much money that the difference between a $100 jacket and a $50,000 jacket in relative terms is a $10 difference to them and their wealth, then they just want the best jacket. Bernardino capitalized on this. So there's four distinct positions you can have in any marketplace. You can have bargain, which is the absolute cheapest one. Poor quality, poor experience. The next is best value. This is the difference between a Walmart and a Target. Target is better value. It's got brighter lights, cleaner. It's the best value for the money. The third position in the marketplace is premium. The high-end Lexus, the BMW, and then the fourth position in the marketplace is luxury, where the price has no cap. Part of the value of this product itself is the cost that people know you paid to get it. Bernardino lives in this luxury bubble. It's where people associate their status with the purchase they made. Typically, when you raise prices, you decrease volume. But in luxury goods, when you raise prices, you increase how many you sell. And that creates this unbelievable amount of profit, which is what has now propelled him to be the single richest man in the world. Rich people have the same problems that poor people do. They just want them solved differently. The big thing they want is they want to deliver a big dream outcome. Number two, we want them to believe with this very high confidence that if they work with us, they're going to get what we promised. On one side, they want it to be incredibly fast. So as soon as they pay, they want to get it and they want to have it with as little effort and sacrifice, assumingly possible. And with the rich, speed and convenience are paramount. Money is never an issue. It's how much are you gonna ask of their time and how painful are you gonna make this for them? Rich people always pay for speed and ease. To appeal to the rich is just to do the same thing in half the time. Whatever the service is, 
even if it's dry cleaning. Return it by end of day. Be the person that can accept anything. If they email you, shoot you a text, if they WhatsApp you, if they call you, you can accept anything because you've made it convenient. They just want it to be effortless. Thirdly, if we know what products and services they want, we need to know how to price those things appropriately. When you solve rich people's problems, you get to charge rich people prices. When you deal with rich people, you have unlimited upside, which is why they're better customers. There's five things to highlight from the customer's perspective, because if you increase the quality of your customers, you increase the quality of your business. Number one, when you charge more money for your product or services, you get an increased emotional investment. If you have a very low cost item, people won't even give it the time of day. And so when you raise the price, you raise their emotional investment. And in a real way, you actually increase the likelihood that they get results. The second way it'll help your customers is that it'll increase their perceived value. There was a research study done where they had three bottles of wine. They had cheap wine, a middle-priced wine, and an expensive wine. They had people try them out and they ranked them based on what they thought people said. I think the most expensive line is the best, the middle price is the middle, and the cheapest wine is the worst. And it's not that surprising that that's what they said, except when the researchers explained that all three wines were the same. When you raise your prices, a more expensive thing is perceived in real terms as more valuable even if the actual core product is the same. The third thing is results for your customers. If you increase their emotional investment, you increase their perceived value. What ends up happening is they actually do get better results. When they sign up for a gym, for personal training versus a 10 month thing, they get better results. The fourth thing that happens when you raise your prices, you actually attract less demanding customers. Now, the higher the price tag, the more expensive the contract, the fewer payment plans you have to set up, the easier the customer is to deal with. The fifth benefit that your customers will get as a result of raising your prices is that you actually have more money you can deliver on your promises for. So imagine you've got a hard cost thing that costs five bucks and you charge eight bucks. You only have $3 left to run the rest of your business, provide services. You don't have a lot of room. Now imagine you charge $50 for that same $5 thing you have, $45 that you can now use to deliver two, three, four times the value. The customer gets a better experience. You can reinvent your product. You can attract higher level talent to your business. If you have no margin, the best people aren't gonna work for you. They're gonna go to the real business owner who understands how margin needs to work. Whereas you're sitting here dealing with fires all day because of people haggling over $50. The best way to sell is having the full conviction that your product is the best. And also you can't say your product is the best if you're trying to do it on a margin and you don't have the money to reinvest in good people. You can't do it. When you have all of those higher paying, lower demanding, happier customers, your perception of the real impact you're actually making goes up. It becomes this snowball that starts rolling and you have these testimonials and these reviews that start rolling in. The momentum builds on the flip side. If you don't have that and it becomes this vicious cycle in the other direction where you're not getting these testimonials and all you're getting is chargebacks and refunds from these demanding customers that had unrealistic expectations because it was such a high percentage of their net worth. There was nothing that was going to save them from themselves. There's no advantage to being the second cheapest person in the marketplace, but there is an advantage to being the most expensive. We hope you got some good lessons from this video. Thank you very much for watching and click like if you enjoyed it. See you guys soon.